So you guys know just how much I love thin clients. From my three node Proxmox cluster on Dell Wise 5060s, video up there, to my little army of 3040s replacing Raspberry Pis all over my house, they're a great deal. But it seems like you guys are buying all the 3040s now. So I had to venture out and find something new. Thin client power supply. Here it is. I don't even remember what model it is. I didn't even say. It's an HP T530. It's a bit on the chunky side compared to the 3040s, but smaller than 5060, so not too bad. So for IO, we got power, came with a power brick. Very important, sometimes these are hard to source. It's like this one's 19 volts. We got two USB 2, gigabit ethernet, two display port, two USB 3. They're not blue, but they're labeled super speed. In the front, we got headphone jack, a super speed type C, and a super speed type A. This was like 30 bucks plus shipping. So you know, of course, I'm not just gonna plug it in, but let's open it up and see what's inside. So I think the way to open this is by popping this bracket here. So I can take the back plate off. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't read any of the instructions online. I just kind of YOLO'd it. Looks like there's a green tab here. Oh, yep, that pops off something. Oh yeah, now the front can come off. Or I guess back, depending on how you look at it, or side, whatever. So here's what the inside looks like. So we got one stick of memory. There's only one slot. And no, I'm not missing it, because when I did the 5060, I missed the second slot. There is just one. So on the board, we got a couple nice connectors. So this is an M.2 Wi-Fi slot. I don't know what connections are wired, but this key would support PCIe, USB, SDIO. Not, again, not sure if PCIe is wired. This is an M.2 storage slot. It's labeled SSD. And I don't believe there's any other storage in this device. So this must have been removed by the seller or they were booting it um, off a network. So I'm gonna have to get an SSD and put it in here for testing. Because if this can take a full size M.2 SSD, that'll be like a game changer for these little thin clients. Because some of them are really hard to upgrade and some of them have completely soldered memory. And that's basically it. So I'm gonna put it back together and boot it up. I decided that screen capture is more important than a monitor. So we got the laptop here. I also went and I found two M.2 SSDs. This one is SATA and this one is NVMe. So I can use these to test and see what compatibility this thing has. I think it originally had a SATA SSD, but I wanna know if it works with NVMe as well. That would mean you could put accelerators like a Coral TPU or other stuff that fits in a PCIe M.2 slot, if it works. We're gonna figure that out. First, we're gonna boot a live CD, see what happens. Press any key for option ROM messages. Booted straight into my flash drive, no configuration necessary. Some of these things are locked, so they won't boot from USB, they'll only boot from network or whatever. So that might be a problem you might have if you buy from a different seller. It all depends on how they were used, because all this stuff is used, so whoever configured it last might have configured it differently than mine. But I'm going right into Zubuntu. I'm using uh, Zubuntu 20.04, and I'm using that version because I already have it on the special Rubik's Cube flash drive, and it's the same version I use to test all the other thin clients. Also, the new version of Zubuntu is bigger than two gigs. The special Rubik's Cube flash drive is only two gigs. According to the docs for this thing, it should be able to decode H.264 at 1080p, um, but not 4K. That's what the GPU documentation suggests. It's got an AMD APU, so it's an AMD mobile chip. I'm not sure exactly what generation. It's pre-Zen though, so it's not one of the Zen APUs. So we got 1080p on Zubuntu, that's a good sign. How about uh, Firefox? Let's see what happens when we play back a video. Oh, I got NumLock stuck. So my videos get uploaded to YouTube in 1080p 60. 
I don't have the equipment to film in 4K, mostly. So you guys get 1080p, which is, I think it's adequate, honestly. Now we watch the uh, the cluster video. This one was real popular. And we got ads. Come on, stats for nerds. Take me stats for nerds. Ooh, there's a speaker. <gasps> there's a speaker. I can hear it. It's making sound. It's just really quiet. I don't know if you can hear that. It's right about here. To be honest, it sounds pretty awful, but um, if you're using this for like some sort of sound effects, anything like that, it's fine. Don't expect any like good audio quality. I have a perfect use case for this. This is going to be the perfect thin client for something I want to build. Yeah, shut up, YouTube. Come on, give me stats for nerds. So we are at 480, 1080p 60, please. Yeah, it, uh, it's not really doing 1080p 60. Maybe we do 1080p 30. How about 720? Yeah, 720 seems to be doing it. So that's on YouTube. Um, I'm gonna record the CPU info, the LSPCI, and the VA info. I'm gonna post them on the blog, link down below. So if you really wanna geek out on what CPU flags this thing has, that sort of thing, link down in the description, that'll have the printouts. That said, this is perfectly usable as a desktop. If you're not, I mean, 1080p YouTube is not its thing. 720p YouTube, definitely its thing. Good at that. It's got like a laptop processor from like five years ago. What more could you want from it? And it was 30 bucks. I spent 30 bucks on this thing. Totally worth the 30 bucks. So yeah, that's my uh, software review. Now let's put these SSDs in and see if we can detect them and how they show up. So the seller on eBay removed the SSD from mine, which is honestly good practice if you're selling stuff. Either wipe it or remove it. So the screw for the SSD is a Torx. I will let you know when I find the right one. It's going to be a T8, I think. Oh yeah, T8. T8 Torx. Or you could buy an iFixit kit and have all of them. Again, not sponsored. They just make good stuff. Oh, this is a toolless jobby thing. The stock SSDs that come in this are really short, but it does have standoffs to go up to longer lengths. Which is good for me because I'm putting in a 2280. This does look like it's toolless. I just have to put it in the right space. Narrator. It was in fact not toolless. It's just a captive screw and standoff thingy, my Bob. How does this go in? So I have to put this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just captive. It's not actually toolless. Got all my hopes up and everything. Okay, so this is the SATA one. I can't reformat this, so we're not gonna put Home Assistant on here. Because this came out of one of my servers that I do need to work. I'm not gonna bother putting the case back on. USB, DP, and power. Oh yeah, and, uh, and Linux. 
Okay, the 500 gig SATA drive worked. So the M.2 slot supports at least SATA. Still disappointed this isn't toolless. It's just a really fancy plastic captive screw. Let's try the NVMe. It's a Samsung 960 Evo, so just a pretty basic. I mean, not super basic, but I didn't go out and buy this for this project. Okay, NVMe drive did not show up. Yep, looks like there's no PCIe on this port. So NVMe is not gonna work. SATA is gonna work. Looking at LSPCI, the drive doesn't show up in LSPCI. So this port is only wired for SATA, which to be honest is probably fine given how much computational power this has. You're not gonna be blowing through SATA bandwidth anyway, but uh, just be aware of that when you're picking out your SSD for this, it's gotta be SATA. Now my unit didn't come with Wi-Fi. There's still an M.2 Wi-Fi slot. And I don't know what connectors that supports. So the M.2 Wi-Fi slot could contain PCIe, USB, SDIO, UART, any number of other protocols. And it's not terribly uncommon for low-end Wi-Fi cards to use SDIO. So like the Dell Wise 3040, its uh, M.2 slot is only wired for SDIO. It doesn't have PCIe or USB. So this thing is an Intel Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. And it has Wi-Fi on PCIe and Bluetooth on USB. So if this shows up, this will tell us if this slot is at least wired for PCIe and USB. So because mine didn't come with Wi-Fi, it doesn't have the antennas built in, which is a bit unfortunate if you want to use it for Wi-Fi. I do realize though, there's a lot of devices that fit in an M.2 Wi-Fi slot that just need PCIe. If you're using Home Assistant, the Coral TPU for Frigate object detection, they have a version that fits in a, a Wi-Fi slot that is great. And I'm sure a lot of you will be thinking about that. Intel Wi-Fi card shows up under PCIe, under LSPCI. Bluetooth card shows up under USB. So the M.2 Wi-Fi slot works for at least PCIe and USB. So your Coral TPUs, they will work. For one final thing, we're gonna go in the BIOS and see what that looks like. Okay, so we can set after power loss, we can set on. Not a lot of options here. I kind of like it that there's not a lot of options because so many of them are useless. Oh no. See if the Pixie Boost still works. Well, the VDI client works too. So hopefully you guys liked my look at this HP T530 Thin Client. It was a great deal on eBay as most of these Thin Clients are. This one has the advantage of having an M.2 SATA slot so you can put pretty big hard drives in there without any difficulty. You get a PCIe Wi-Fi slot if you want to put a Coral TPU for Home Assistant and Frigate. Um, it's cheap. I wish I would have bought more of them. You got plenty of USB 3, you got a Type C, which is new on these low end devices. I mean, it's not new. Plenty of devices have them, but it's new for devices that are in the sub $50 range on eBay to have Type C. So, uh, yeah, glad you came to watch. If you got any other good stuff on eBay you think I should try out, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. I love all these good used hardware reviews. It's great to keep things out of e waste. And for me, home labbing is all about having fun and learning about software I need. So I don't need a huge powerful server and something like this works great for plenty of home lab purposes and plenty of projects around the house. It's easier to find than a Raspberry Pi. It's a heck of a lot more powerful in most cases. And uh, yeah, it's great. If you wanna chat with me on Discord, I got a link down in the description for that as well. I got a blog post on my website with all the nerdy details. If you're, if you're really into those, and yeah, so come along and see me on the next adventure.